Hello and welcome to another sleeve tutorial. I'm going to show you how to put in a cap sleeve. On the right side we've got a sleeve which is totally inserted and on the left side we've got a sleeve which is overlocked with a seam facing into the sleeve which is a really nice neat finish with some binding. So we're going to have a look at both of these methods. I have a bodice prepared here already and I've lined one side and I've done the neckline and the other side is unlined. So I'm also preparing two sleeves and I'm going to put them in two different ways so that you see how this is done. So I need the binding for the unlined and the right side is of course lined. Now I've cut out my cup sleeves and I want to make sure that I mark the sleeve head and the front and I'm putting the right sides together as per usual and I'm sewing along the lower edge and I'm sorry this is a bit glaring uh, the white I forgot to turn off my LED setting but it's just kind of works on this because there's a little bit of red underneath it so you're sewing along the edge and then I'm going to cut this back so you're actually getting some footage of the sewing as well, even if it's not the best, but <laughs> mm, you live and learn. So now I'm moving my lining over the seam allowance and I'm going to top stitch that as well. And that is called understitching and it gives you a really super duper line so that when you turn this, none of the lining will ever peep out. Make sure that the seam allowance is facing into the lining while you do this and it doesn't fold over. Now that we've done that and it's really nice and neat, I'm going to fold this back and we're now going to press the whole lot really nicely. Always this pressing isn't it? Both sides as well. But um, ironing makes a lot of difference so if you do that well then everything will just come together better and you already can see what a cute little sleeve that's going to be. So now I'm not going to sew all the way around with a holding stitch but I'm going to put in my gather stitch and that's plenty. That's with your biggest stitch that you've got available on your machine and you go just around the top of the sleeve. And a little bit is peeping out of my white and I cut that back. The reason for this is of course the understitching so it pushes up a little bit. Next I'm going to put this sleeve in. The other thing that you should then do is pull your gather threads a little bit so that it becomes more round at the top and then you can steam that in as well. That's a very helpful little trick. So this pinning business here is quite arduous really, <laughs> takes a long time. I'm leaving this side in so you can see the full thing, speeded it up a bit so it's not quite so boring. The first pin should be going in flat and then I'm going to um, pull my thread here a little bit more so that I get it under. But what I really don't want anyone to say is this sleeve is too big. You do need to hold the sleeve in so it gives you that beautiful round top of the sleeve when it's done. It's just the way it is people and it takes practice and this is not too big this sleeve, definitely not. So then you go to the other side and you put that one in as well and basically you pin the whole sleeve in and it's not a quick thing. You might also have to adjust a little bit the sleeve head, that sometimes happens as well. I'm just moving it over, I think it's just like 3 mil or something, but if it makes a difference to your sleeve then it does, you know, nobody ever does the seam allowance so perfect in every way that everything is spot on. Anyway, this looks very very nice and now I'm going to put my sleeve in. And what you want to watch out for is that you have them edge to edge, that you don't get pleats, that underneath is really flat and smooth. You want to smooth it out all the time. And um, I'm always using the pin that I take out to hold down the fabric so that I can ease it under the presser foot. And my left hand has a lot of pressure applied there, also holding the fabric in place. It does take a long time to learn how to put a sleeve in properly. And to be honest, um, I think after 10 years of sewing, I still sometimes struggled. So now the sleeve is all in. Check from both sides that you haven't actually, you know, caught anything. 
and then you want to give this a jolly good press. Lots of steam, make it nice and flat so that we can work with it easier. It's so important. Press, press, press. Now that that's done, I'm going to put my lining over. I can't do it like that, can I? No, you roll it the other way and then you're going to put the seams on top of each other and we're basically going to um, sandwich that little sleeve in between the lining layer and the upper layer and actually that's exactly the same as you would do without a sleeve only that it looks much more crumply and it isn't quite as easy to do because you have got the sleeve in there which kind of pulls together and pulls this whole thing so now I'm going to sew this in and again you have to make sure that you don't catch anything underneath and you should be stitching about one stitch next to the line that you've already got so that none of the stitching is visible on the outside of that first stitch where you put this um, sleeve in. You also don't want to go too far over, you know, don't not do two stitches and stuff because you might actually uh, sew a little pleat into your sleeve. So just one stitch next to the stitching line you that you've already got. And you go down all the way to the end and you hope that you've caught nothing. Secure your stitch and now we're going to cut the whole lot back. Beautiful. And now put a safety pin into the back and then pull the back through to the front, always the same technique. It's really nothing new, is it? With, with me, you get the same techniques over and over, but practice makes perfect. Grab your safety pin and pull the whole lot through. Now we've got the sleeve inserted. For one thing, I like it because it's really clean, but what I don't like is that the top always looks a bit crumply. It never really looks all that smooth like it should do. Anyway, it's still a very nice sleeve, looking good. Now we can close our side seam and that would basically conclude the bodice. So I've done that and this side is finished, looking spiffin. Now I'm going to do the other side. And again, I've kind of like pulled my threads, I've steamed it in, and I'm now going to sew that sleeve in in exactly the same way and start on one side and basically pin it in all the way to the other side and I won't bore you with the whole lot again watching me pin as long as you've got the right sides together and on the inside everything's overlocked we are okay right pinned it all in over to the sewing machine and I can sew it in and you can see how beautiful that sits on top when it's not inserted in. Once it's sewn in, we are going to steam it again. I drum this in though nice. Steam, 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 iron, iron, iron. <laughs> Every step. So now we've got this beautiful finish really. Now I'm going to take this on the inside and I'm going to overlock and I start slightly below my sleeve and I end slightly below the sleeve. With that done and the seam allowance nicely sitting to the um, outside, I can now close and overlock my side seam. And you could also do this with a lined bodice of course and then you'd have the rough edges of the lining and the rough edges of the bodice at the top. Next we're going to prepare some binding. It's an inch and a quarter or three centimeters wide. For me that is the perfect width to work with. If it is for you, I don't know, you need to try that yourself. Iron it lengthways in half. I also prefer my homemade binding simply because there's more stretch in it and it's just better quality, some really nice fabric. And then this goes over the sleeve and then is rolled to the inside and makes it nice and clean. So 
I need to first of all cut off the top there and then fold it in so it's nice and neat and you can start maybe a centimeter or a centimeter and a half above the end of the sleeve and then we're going to pin this in it's really not important that you have that one centimeter seam allowance um, I'd rather work with less and work with my three centimeter strip because it works so so well it's just the right distance you know it's not too big not too wide and I pin this in and a lot of uh, instructors I keep seeing them saying oh no you need to make sure it's loose otherwise it's going to you know crumple up the fabric or something and it's just wrong you want to have a little bit of tension on there because that will keep the armhole from stretching not too much but a little bit and then on the other side you cut to the top there and then you fold it in and um, there we go and then another little stretch and we put that in and that will then sit so perfect on the body all the time of course it takes a little bit of practice to know how much you have to stretch it but just a little bit very very little so it's not massive it's just to make sure that there's no stretch and then I line it up with the edge of my presser foot on the left hand side which is a bit weird because you don't line it up with the left side with the right side sorry you line it up with the left side and that's so that the other step which is then sewing it down from the outside you don't have to concentrate on um, the distance at all you can just sew close to the edge and it will be perfect so now I'm running into the um, seam line of where I had my sleeve sewn in and with that all in guess what we're doing now before we roll it in we're going to understitch it again because the understitching will make sure nothing rolls out in my case i don't need to cut it back but if there's too much standing then you would cut it back seam allowance into the binding we're going to top stitch this down close to the edge and the uh, binding will automatically now stretch again a little bit while you're working with it so that little bit of tightness that i created literally gets pulled out again and gives you the perfect sleeve. It's how it works. <laughs> and now we're going to turn this in and iron it neat and flat. So our next step after this is to actually sew this bias binding down. And when you look at the clothes that you've got in your cupboard with a cap sleeve, you will see this line that goes across and around. And that's why. We're going to start here sewing down and then all the way around. And because this is just a sample that I don't need for anything, I've only changed the color of the thread on my bobbin. Naughty, naughty. But anyway, um, so you sew down. And now you turn with a foot up, put the foot back down and then you go around and the beauty now is because you lined up the presser foot with that side I've shown you just before now you just concentrate on that right hand side edge and make sure that you're even to that and that gives you perfect finish there you go very slowly this is not something you should be doing fast you need to move your fabric around as well so that you don't get any pleats like that just keep moving it round and turning it and slowly sew all the way to the other side. You can see this looks really nice, but my seam is now pointing the wrong direction. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna snip right to the quick here, fold it in, and then I'm going to press that. And that is something that can be avoided with this. What you can do if you don't like doing that is put just a normal row of binding at the top where it's literally just put over the top but it's all slotted in because that will then automatically face the right direction and that's also good right? Give it a good press from the outside. Let's have a look at these sleeves again. On the right hand side, the inserted one, and on the left hand side, the one where the seam allowance faces into the sleeve. 
and I can tell you which one I prefer. I do think that there's merit for that right hand side method when you're using a lace sleeve but for me personally I prefer to work with the left hand side method where you have got the overlocking. And there that insertion method I think is absolutely fabulous. Thank you very much for watching again and I'll see you next time.